Hello, fifth graders, welcome back. This is chapter three, lesson one of the Ecosystem Restoration Unit. For this lesson, we will be skipping activity three, so let's go ahead and get started. Natural Resources Rescue sent us a report for our Costa Rican Rainforest Restoration Project. The image on the left shows our project area, and the image on the right shows a healthy rainforest. Take a moment and analyze these two images. What do you notice? What is similar and what is different? Natural Resources Rescue collected these, this new weather data from the project area and from a healthy part of the rainforest for one month. Let's look carefully at the new weather data. So if you look at our table, we have our project area and our healthy rainforest. It's going to tell us about the number of sunny days, total rainfall, and the carbon dioxide in the air. In our project area, there's 23 sunny days, 182 millimeters or 7.1 inches of total rainfall, and a normal level of carbon dioxide in the air. In the healthy rainforest, there was 24 sunny days, 179 millimeters or seven inches of total rainfall, and the normal, and, and a normal carbon dioxide level in the air. So what I want you to do now is to answer this question. What does the data show? To answer this question, you can write the answer in your chapter three, lesson one activity packet in a notebook. You can talk about the answer with someone near you, or you can think about the answer in your head. Go ahead, pause the video and answer this question now. Earlier in chapter two, we looked at the weather data for one week. So remember the table we just looked at was for one month. This table is for one week. How are the reports for one week and one month similar and how are they different? To answer this question, you can write the answer in your chapter three, lesson one activity packet in a notebook. You can talk about the answer with someone near you or you can think about the answer in your head. Once again, pause the video and answer this question now. The old data led us to believe that the trees didn't have enough water. Based on this new data for a whole month, what new ideas do you have about the Cercopia trees and that project area? I'm thinking that there is enough water. Based on the table, there's only a 0.1 inch or a three millimeter difference of total rainfall, which is not that much. According to the new data, are there any big differences between the project area and the healthy rainforest? What do you think? Scientists may get new data after they think they understand something or after making a claim. They may have to revise their ideas. A scientist working for Natural Resources Rescue made observations of the soil in the project area and the healthy rainforest ecosystem. She sent us her observations. Let's take a look. On the left are the observations that the scientists made of the soil from a healthy rainforest and from the project area. So if we look, we see soil A, and this is from the healthy rainforest. The color is dark brown, kind of like the color of chocolate. The texture is fine grained and soft, and it sticks together when I press the soil in my hand. Organisms observed, and remember, organisms are living things, were millipedes, worms, leaf cutter ants, and snails. Now, soil B is from the Rainforest Restoration Project area. The color of the soil was light brown with small bits of gray. The texture was sandy and coarse and had large grains, and it separated easily when I pressed the soil into my hand. Organisms observed, none. What differences do you notice between the soil and the two ecosystems? To answer this question, write the answer in your chapter three, lesson one activity packet in a notebook. You can talk about the answer with someone near you, or you can think about your answer in your head. Pause the video and answer this question now. Remember this document that Natural Resources Rescue sent us? Let's take a look at it again. Our project goal is the restoration of the project area to restore this section of the Costa Rican rainforest ecosystem and improve its health. Your tasks are one, 
to investigate why the cercopia trees aren't growing and thriving in the soil. And let's focus on the part where it says the soil. Two is to create a rainforest restoration plan where you will write an argument about why the cercopia trees are not growing and thriving in the soil based on evidence. And to suggest an action step to improve the health of the soil and the ecosystem. When I was reading that, I think I saw soil three times. So I'm thinking that soil is very important during this lesson. We found out that there is enough water and sun in the project area and the air is also normal. Now we found that the soil in the project area is different from the soil in the healthy rainforest. By knowing more about the soil in the project area, we may get a better idea about why the trees are not growing and thriving. Our chapter three question, and this is a question we are going to be focusing on from now until the end of this chapter, is why aren't the cercopia trees growing and thriving in the soil? So remember, we're not trying to answer this question now, this is the question we want to be able to answer at the end of chapter three. Today, during lesson one, we are going to investigate this question. Why is the matter that makes up soil different in different places? We'll observe two soil samples. We couldn't take soil from Costa Rica, but we do have samples that are similar to the soil found in the healthy rainforest and in the project area. As, an eco as ecologists, our job is to make very careful observations. You are going to be using this table to make your observations. You can find it in your activity packet. So let's go back and look at this image. What do you notice about soil A and soil B? Pause the video to make your observations. As ecologists, our job is to make very careful observations. We are going to focus on what the soil looks like and a little bit on what it smells like. I know you guys couldn't smell it, so I wrote down some observations for soil A and soil B on the chart to the left. So soil A is dark brown. It has organisms in it. It was soft and it smells earthy. Soil B was light brown, sandy, dusty, doesn't smell like much. So now I want you to answer question five. How are the two soils similar and how are they different? To answer this question, you can write the answer in your chapter three, lesson one activity packet in a notebook. You can talk about the answer with someone near you or you can think about the answer in your head. Pause the video and answer question five now. Based on what we've observed, what ideas do you have about why the matter that makes up soil is different in different places? Take a moment and just think about this question. That concludes our chapter three, lesson one. I look forward to seeing you in lesson two. Hello, fifth graders. This is chapter two, lesson six, and chapter two, lesson seven of the Ecosystem Restoration Unit. Remember, we are combining these two lessons, so let's continue our learning. So Natural Resources Rescue sent us this. Our project goal is the restoration of the project area. Restore this section of the Costa Rican rainforest ecosystem and improve its health. Your tasks, one, to investigate why the cercopia trees aren't growing and thriving in the project area, and two, Create a rainforest restoration plan. Write an argument that includes a claim that answers the question. Suggest an action step to improve the health of the trees in the ecosystem. You are now going to write a natural resources rescue about the claim that you believe is best. You will support your claim with evidence. Remember a scientific argument starts with a question about the natural wor world, and then you have a claim, which is a proposed answer to the question about the natural world, and then you have evidence that is based off of ideas as well as data. So what is a scientific argument? Well, it answers a question with a claim about the natural world. It includes evidence to support the claim, Evidence can be data from the project area, ideas from investigations, ideas from the books, 
ideas from the simulations. It also connects the evidence to the claim by linking different pieces of evidence together to show how they support the claim. It is written for an audience and it uses scientific language. Before we start, answer this question. What is the purpose of a restoration plan? Why do we have one? To answer this question, you can write the answer in your chapter two, lesson six seven activity packet in a notebook. You can talk about the answer with someone near you, or you can think about the answer in your head. Pause the video and answer this question now. Here's another question. What are some actions that natural resources rescue could take to help the Cercopia trees grow and thrive? Well, why would your idea help? To answer this question, again, you can write the answer in your chapter two, lesson six seven activity packet in a notebook. You can talk about the answer with someone near you, or you can think about the answer in your head. Pause the video again to answer this question. Now that we've done a little bit of thinking, you're going to turn to page 52 and 53 of your ecosystem restoration workbook or page eight and nine of your chapter two, lesson six seven activity packet. You are going to choose at least one of your action steps and write about it. Make sure the step you choose is connected to your argument. Record the purpose for our new action plan. You can use the sentence stem you see on your left. In order to help the Cercopia trees in the project area grow and thrive, we recommend dot, dot, dot. Make sure that your argument uses scientific language. Once you have your argument completed, that is the end of lesson six and seven as well as the end of chapter two. I look forward to seeing you in chapter three and nice job with all your hard work.